Hello, I am Rafał. Uh, I will be talking about Deno. I don't know if anyone has already heard about about it. Okay, so okay, so pre pretty much a lot of people. I I was expecting even less. So very good. Okay. So uh, you may know me from Stack Overflow. Some people don't recognize my face, but they recognize my avatar. So uh, if you are active with uh, JavaScript, then maybe is it? Uh, do you hear me well? Because okay. Uh, so, uh, if you are active uh, in JavaScript and especially Node.js, then you might have seen my, one of my answers. Okay, so the talk is from Node.js from Node.js to Deno, uh, a JavaScript TypeScript runtime built with V8 and Rust. Uh, it was originally uh, planned to be built in Go, uh, but right now it is uh, already ported to Rust. Uh, does anyone recognize this slogan, Evented I.O. for V8 JavaScript? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was the first description of Node.js on GitHub. So uh, when no one has uh, had any idea what Node.js was, it was described as Evented I.O. for V8 JavaScript. And uh, it didn't describe it very well, so people didn't still know what it is. And uh, currently uh, the description for Deno is a secure TypeScript runtime on V8. So it is maybe not even uh, much more descriptive than uh, the first slogan of Node.js, but uh, I will try to uh, describe it uh, in details today. So first, some timeline. Node was started by Ryan, Ryan Dahl in 2009 and Dino was started in uh, 2018, so last year. So it is pretty fresh um, and uh, so don't expect a uh, major framework or major uh, runtime, but it is already getting some traction and I think this is a very good time to start interested in it. Uh, so the main difference uh, with Node.js, because people are usually, okay, I think, uh, I don't know if you hear me very well because I sometimes hear louder and sometimes, uh, okay. So the main difference with Node.js, because people usually compare it to Node and rightly so, is that uh, Node is basically a server-side JavaScript with v V8 uh, and libuv uh, and is, it's written in C++. Uh, Deno, on the other hand, is a server-side TypeScript. Um, it can also run JavaScript, but it doesn't need any transpilation steps. Uh, and it is also based on the V8 engine, and but it is uh, built uh, in Rust and uses the Tokyo framework for the I.O., just like Node is using libv. Uh, so some numbers, I think they are quite interesting, is uh, that Deno has already a lot of stars on GitHub compared to Node. I think that uh, more than half of the stars is a lot. And on Stack Overflow, there are only nine questions right now. Uh, compared to mo more than the quarter million for Node.js, so. Yeah, sorry. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, but uh, I think that uh, what's more surprising for me is that it has so much, uh, so much stars on GitHub uh, already. So, uh, for I was expecting to it, for it to have like one, I don't know, twenty of uh, of Node.js stars, and it already has more than half of Node.js. So. Uh, I think that looking at uh, at those numbers uh, might uh, might show us that uh, a lot of developers are already interested in Deno, but uh, maybe no uh, no real world project has already been done in it, so uh, no a lot of Stack Overflow questions yet. Um, so I will at the start I would like to show you how it, to install it because maybe some people are using laptops right now so maybe someone will, would like to try. The installation is very simple. Uh, there are some scripts that you can run but uh, I, I don't know if anyone would be uh, very happy in running random scripts from the internet and piping it to your shell so uh, I wouldn't. So. Uh, but you can just download a file from Dino releases uh, on GitHub and the distributions are for Windows, Mac and uh, Linux and they are all just single files, uh, so uh, just single executables, so there are no, uh, you can copy it anywhere when you, when you want and just make it executable and run it. Um, it's, uh, it's not like you need to put it in US or local or anything like that, just anywhere where you can find it. Um, 
So here is the main URL, is Denoland, and here is the URL for the releases for anyone who would like to try it. And how do you run programs with Deno? Uh, you can either run a file name, uh, Deno and a file name, but you can also write, uh, run a URL directly from the internet. Uh, so uh, you don't even need to download the program that you are running. And people who are uh, concerned about security might be uh, right now thinking why uh, anyone would run a random script from the internet without first downloading it and checking it. Uh, especially when uh, the slogan was that it's a secure runtime for TypeScript. So uh, the idea is that there is no network error and file system write access by default. So if you run any script, not only from the internet, but also a local file on your file system, uh, then the script doesn't have any access, any write access to your file system. So it can only read files and cannot write anything. And also it doesn't have any network access uh, because just reading files and sending your credentials or something like that would compromise your security even more than just writing your files on your file system. So to allow your scripts uh, to write or to have network access, there are uh, there are flags like dash dash allow write and dash dash allow net um, to uh, to make your script uh, use the network or write access to the file system. Uh, I've seen uh, from those uh, not a lot of uh, questions on Stack Overflow. One of them was about uh, how it compares to TS Node because if it's just a TypeScript runtime, then we already have TS Node that uses uh, Node.js underneath. Um, and you can see my answer there. And um, the basic conclusion that I got with some simple tests is that it's a, a lot of, a lot faster on startup for simple, uh, for a simple example that I've used. It was just a single file that requires a single library and runs a single function. Uh, and with TS Node, uh, the startup time was pretty much uh, was almost a second to to just uh, run a one-liner, uh, while on Dino it was in milliseconds. So uh, it's much faster. Um, and uh, what I've s what I wrote here is that it's much e easier development because if you see the uh, question on Stack Overflow, you can either Google it, but uh, at the end I will uh, show you the URL to the slide so you can be able to see uh, those links that I post here. Um, it's a lot of work to actually publish a TypeScript uh, module on NPM. So um, it's not like uh, of course, you can use TS Node to run a local file uh, written in TypeScript without any transpilation step that is explicit. Uh, but if you want to write uh, Node modules and publish it on NPM in TypeScript, then it is not so straightforward. You need to uh, to set up the transpilation steps. You need to make sure that you don't uh, commit the uh, build result to GitHub to not waste uh, any, uh, not only waste space, but to not... Uh, uh, show any changes that are not really changes, but just maybe a different transpilation. Uh, but at the same time, to make sure that you don't ignore it on npm, because if you uh, put something like the dist folder on the uh, in the git ignore file, then by default npm will also ignore it and don't publish it. And th th there are a lot of things that to keep in mind. But uh, if you want to publish a library in TypeScript uh, for Deno, then you just publish a single file on the internet anywhere you want. So we can like commit one file to GitHub and just use the raw GitHub content to, to reference it in other programs. I will show some examples in a moment. So it all started with Go. The idea was to uh, use Go as the um, implementation language for the Node, uh, but it was um, porting to Rust or was proposed very early and there are very interesting discussions to, to read. You can later see uh, the issues on GitHub. And it's also very interesting to actually read uh, all of the issues at the early stages of development because a lot of design decisions were discussed uh, there and it's nice to know the context. So example. So here's a simple hi.ts file. Uh, it consists of two lines. One is importing hello from uh, a file that I publish on my website. And then, and then you just run it. You don't need any npm install step or you don't need to download the file. Um, you don't need to have any node modules folder. 
uh, or any dependencies, um, you can just directly require files from the internet. Of course, if you, for example, require it from GitHub, then you can use tags for the versions and things like that. So it's not like you cannot version it or, uh, or do anything like that. Uh, so if anyone would just run it, it will just download the hello function and execute it. Uh, and this is how it looks like. So you run, for example, if it was the hide.ts file, you run deno hide.ts. And this is uh, where I actually got problems uh, pre uh, preparing this presentation. So I thought that I would mention about it because people might do uh, the same thing as I did uh, and have the same problems. So uh, I got an error uh, that I have unknown made media type for, uh, for the file. So it turned out that uh, I am using Netlify for my website and Netlify by default uh, doesn't serve the .ts files with the TypeScript uh, media type, but uses a text VND troll tech linguist uh, content type. So uh, I actually didn't even know about uh, media type like this. and. Uh, but it turns out that there is some standard for it that uh, links to trolltech.com website that doesn't even exist now. So uh, it's not like it's very, very popular and um, it's like a domain is for sale or something. Okay, so I did my fix uh, to add uh, headers and this is also uh, something that I would advise you to, to look uh, very carefully. So uh, adding the headers, uh, the underscore headers file for Netlify to add uh, custom headers to certain uh, files served from Netlify. This is actually an error, but uh, here's a working one. I don't know if anyone has noticed any, uh, any difference uh, bef uh, between those files. Uh, okay, I see someone uh, is, uh, has spotted the difference. So the T is lowercase. Uh, and what's, uh, what's interesting is that uh, this is the result of uh, headers with bad, bad fix. Uh, I actually get uh, two headers called content type, but this time they are the same, uh, uh, the, the same, uh, you know, with uh, both uh, capital letters. So I didn't. Uh, I thought that uh, Netlify has correctly recognized it, but I think that maybe it is some bug in Netlify or something like that. You need to have exactly content type, and then you have just a single header that you want. So I'm talking about it because in case anyone would like to try to uh, deploy any, any file to Netlify, then uh, I spent, uh, I, I think, quite a lot of time on f figuring out what's, what's happening here. So um, what about libraries that you can use? Uh, we have Deno Core, um, and uh, I am also showing you the stars on GitHub to, to, to have some impression on the popularity of those libraries. Uh, and especially how uh, how not popular they are there are yet so uh, to see that this is a very early stage of development uh, so there are the no standard modules that you require with std and it's uh, I, I, I think there will be some uh, examples uh, later what uh, you can require from it um, and there are quite a few frameworks for it already a web web frameworks uh, the http is uh, built in as a standard module and we have uh, f six other frameworks. Uh, as you can see, a lot of uh, a lot of development in Deno right now is uh, is done in China and in Japan. Uh, actually, even some of the issues on GitHub are written in Chinese. So uh, I I had to use Google Translator to, to understand some of the discussions there. But uh, it's generally uh, considered uh, you know bad practice to write Chinese uh, Chinese uh, issues and other developers are. Uh, are telling the other Chinese developers to speak in English, to write in English, because not everyone knows uh, knows Chinese. And uh, it, but I think it shows how uh, how big Chinese developer community is getting. And um, and probably we don't even know about it because if they have some forums written in Chinese, then we we don't even Google it or anything like that. But uh, for some reason, a lot of uh, Chinese and Japanese developers are already using Deno. So we have quite a few frameworks. As you can see, uh, the stars on GitHub, like, uh, you know, 25 is not a lot, but um, um, but this is uh, this is a very early stage. And I was actually even surprised that there are so many frameworks right now, especially when uh, when the HTTP API was uh, uh, was um, was finished not very recently. 
so we have currently three databases that are uh, that we can uh, access in Deno: Redis, Postgres, and MySQL. And what's interesting is that one of that is uh, was written by Bartek Ivanchuk from Poland, and uh, maybe a little bit of applause for him. <laughs> because I think this is the only, uh, from all those uh, frameworks and database drivers, this is the only European uh, uh, member of the community. So, uh, uh, so this, is, uh, this is interesting that we, we uh, I, I, I hope that we will have a nice uh, Deno community in Poland and, uh, and we can uh, build some interesting things in the future. So, um, so those are the databases. Of course, they are very early and um, uh, as you can see, the uh, popularity is still in, you know, in uh, like uh, 30, 60, 12, and 3. So it's like, uh, oh, the last one is that ORM uh, written by the developer of the MySQL driver. So, uh, so there are already uh, some interesting things uh, created in Deno. Uh, the other packages you can find on the Deno land uh, slash x uh, website. It is actually a redirection service for uh, modules hosted on GitHub. Uh, so uh, currently, uh, currently registering your modules is like a pull request on those uh, on one repo uh, on the Dino um, uh, on uh, of the Dino website, and it just gets redirected to GitHub. Uh, there is dinopackage.com, which I just found uh, recently. I don't, I'm not sure what it does exactly. And there's dino slash sh, but I think it's just one one of the developers' uh, shortcut for his own modules. But I'm not sure about it. But uh, the modules can be uh, used directly from GitHub, so no one has to register anywhere. You can uh, you can just uh, import any code that is already on GitHub. Uh, or anywhere else, just like I, uh, I showed you uh, from my personal website, it just needs to have some uh, media types correctly defined and, uh, and you can serve it. Um, what's interesting is that uh, if Netlify is serving uh, bad uh, media types for TypeScript files, it, it shows us that no one is directly requesting TypeScript files right now, so uh, because we cannot use TypeScript directly on the front end side. So, uh, Java, for JavaScript, for any server to serve JavaScript incorrectly, it would be uh, just spotted on in one second. But uh, it turns out that Netlify could uh, work for a lot of time without serving TypeScript files correctly because no one is just serving them and using it. But maybe then we will change it. And hopefully maybe on the front end side also we will have, we'll see some uh, ideas to require TypeScript files directly. Uh, so there is a model uh, registry, I've already said it, that this is a redirection service that you can earn modules by pull requests. And for example, there is uh, this one of the install scripts that I was showing uh, at the beginning, beginning uh, saying how to install Deno. It just redirects to, you know, raw GitHub user content, Deno land, Deno install, master install sh. So it's just like a single script, uh, single shell script um, on GitHub. So no magic there. Uh, I, for, for anyone who would like to um, uh, to experiment, there is uh, something to uh, to uh, keep in mind that uh, Deno, uh, w wherever you uh, require, uh, wherever you import or uh, or just run a script that is uh, downloaded from the web, uh, it downloads it just once and caches it. Downloads it. Uh, actually also um, uses TypeScript to transpile it to JavaScript and then it is cached and never uh, downloaded again un unless you uh, explicitly clear the cache and this is a place where the cache is, uh, for example, on Mac. Uh, you can also use local caches uh, using the deno dir uh, environment variable. So uh, you, can, uh, you can have like uh, a deno, for example, it's just an example that that deno directory in a local uh, directory. But also, I've noticed that when you used that slash uh, instead of here, there is a pwd, so it just inserts the uh, current working directory. But if you use a dot uh, in that, uh, I've seen. I think it's some of the bugs of uh, of deno because it tells me that. Uh, 
uh, the import path cannot end with a TS extension, but actually it has to end with TX extension with Deno. So, um, and this is one of the differences from uh, the uh, normal, uh, the current way that you use uh, TypeScript in Node, that uh, you omit the file extension, so you don't, uh, you know, you don't put the dot .ts uh, at the end of the files. Uh, also, because when it gets transpiled, it uh, uses JavaScript extensions, and it, they would have to change the strings to uh, during the transpilation step, to, so it would complicate things. And currently, I think that a Visual Studio Code uh, would tell you that it's an error to require something with a TS extension, but uh, it needs to be done that way for Deno, and I think that they are already working with the uh, uh, with Visual Studio Code developers to make it uh, compatible. But it's just, you know, it's just uh, uh, underlining as an error, but it works, so it's not a very big deal. Uh, so the current state uh, of Deno is that I would not say that it is ready for production yet, but I think also that this is the best time to get involved in it, and in any software really, um, because uh, right now there are very few people that uh, have any experience working in Deno. It will, I think, it will the, the API will change a lot of uh, a lot yet. So. Uh, it's not, you know, uh, set in stone, but um, but as in uh, with any technology, it's very good to be an early adopter if it gets some traction. And I think that it will get traction for for few reasons. First of all, that it's Ryan Dahl and it's already known for Node. And uh, when he started with Node, then a lot of people were saying that it's it's a strange idea and it will not uh, get popular. But uh, I've even remembered that for the first few years, because I was uh, involved in it very early, uh, people were uh, looking at me very uh, strangely when I was saying that uh, we should use Node.js and they were asking me what it is and I, I was saying that it's JavaScript on the backend and people were telling me that I'm crazy, that we, we have enough problems with JavaScript on the front end, so <laughs> why would we put it on the back end? So, and why won't we use a real language like Java or, I don't know, Ruby, Perl or Python, but, uh, uh, and then when people, uh, I was saying that, no, no, but it's a great idea, it doesn't have threads, so it's single-threaded, and uh, also people were uh, saying that it's crazy to have a server that is single-threaded, but Actually, this is how Redis works, how Nginx works. So it's it's a very good way to uh, write uh, high performance servers. So, long story short, Node.js got very popular despite people having uh, uh, strange opinions about it at the beginning. And uh, the other thing is that it uses V8, and I, I think that it is one of the um, um, early promotion for Node was that it actually uses the V8 engine by Google. So Ryan Dahl was. Uh, uh, promoted on all of the uh, Google's conferences and it was a great idea for Google to tell about a success story that someone uh, has taken V8 engine from the browser and use it on the backend side and things like that. So here it also uses V8. So uh, Google will also be able to, uh, you know, to, uh, um, to have some uh, proud uh, in, uh, in the no popularity. But uh, this time it also uses TypeScript. So also Microsoft will have some uh, pride in Deno if it gets some traction, and also Rust programming lang language. So also Mozilla will have some, uh, you know, some stake in it. So uh, and having uh, very interesting technologies by Mozilla, Microsoft, and Google uh, used in one project. Uh, I think th this is, and also the name of Ryan Dahl that is already known for a great success of Node.js. I think it uh, it will get traction uh, pretty soon. I think so. Uh, especially when we already see some frameworks for it. So my prediction is that the industry will ignore it until it is ready, and then startups who right now provide some infrastructure or tooling uh, will get a lot of business when it finally gets popular, and also people will uh, who used it before it was cool, like I hope that uh, a lot of you will get interested here, uh, will get more job offers that they can read, so like it is now with jo Node.js at least in my experience. So uh, this is uh, my prediction. I might be wrong here, but I might be right. It's always, you know, it's uh, like Einstein said that it's very hard. Uh, the prediction is very hard, especially for the future. So, um, 
so but uh, you know if you don't risk then you uh, never use something that uh, is very popular but not a lot of people are able to work with it so this is the best uh, really a uh, place that you, uh, a developer wants to be so to have a very uh, ha ha to, to know uh, uh, you know technology with a lot of demand but not a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people uh, already knowing it so I have some of recommended talks for you. One of these is the original Node.js presentation of Ryan Dahl for some context of uh, to see how it, uh, how uh, Ryan Dahl presented Node.js for the first time and what was the reaction of the audience uh, when already n when no one has ever heard about it yet. So w w because we uh, comparing Deno to Node, I think we should compare Deno to very young Node. So. Uh, uh, like with any new technology, so it's uh, it's easy to say that currently Node.js is more capable, is uh, has more libraries and uh, has better uh, community. But we should really see what Node looked like at the very beginning and compare it uh, compare the Node to that. Uh, another is um, history of Node.js by Ryan, Ryan Dahl, uh, just two years after uh, the original presentation. And then uh, the talk that uh, Deno uh, development really started from it. It's 10 things I regret about Node.js by Ryan Dahl. It's just last year. Um, and uh, then another talk, Deno new server side runtime, runtime by Ryan Dahl. So, uh, but especially the 10 things I regret about Node.js. It's, uh, it's interesting because Ryan Dahl uh, well, explains the things that he regrets. So uh, th th that is the really the reason to create Deno. Um, th there are some resources that I will not go through here, but uh, I would uh, advise you to read uh, actually the issues and uh, pull request discussions because it's uh, it's it's a very good context for uh, a lot of the design decisions for Deno. Uh, and the other ones are just websites and uh, things where can you can find modules. There will be links for the uh, for that at the end of the presentation. So, okay. So, if you have any questions, then this is the p time for it. You can use a typed language b that works both on the client side and the server side. Uh, what's your take on WebAssembly? And do you think WebAssembly is something that is complementary to Dino or maybe a competition to it? Well, I'm actually quite interested in WebAssembly from uh, quite a long time right now. I'm really surprised that it didn't get any more traction than it already has. Uh, but I think that uh, currently, uh, I suppose that uh, Deno would at some time, uh, um, because it's built on V8 engine, so it will support any technology that V8 supports. Uh, so I think we will be able to uh, to use WebAssembly or any language that is compiled to WebAssembly on Deno. But uh, currently, the focus is mainly on TypeScript. So uh, this is the main language and uh, the main focus to make it work without any transpilation steps. A actually, in the Deno uh, binary. Uh, the TypeScript compiler is included as a V8 snapshot, so uh, that's why it starts so quickly. So it's already compiled uh, into a V8 snapshot, and uh, unlike the you know the TypeScript compiler used in Node uh, normally, so the main focus is on TypeScript. But I would think that uh, WebAssembly will be uh, will be supported sometime, just like uh, maybe it already is at, uh, in s in some way, but. Currently, not uh, not all of the web APIs uh, have been implemented yet. Awesome. Any more questions? Okay. Well. From my experience, one of the reasons that people uh, transpile TypeScript modules to JavaScript when publishing them is the uh, problem of different TypeScript versions and settings. So how does Dino deal with the fact that you can include any TypeScript file and this TypeScript file <coughs> might have been written with different TypeScript settings? Yes, I, if I remember there was some discussion about it uh, too, uh, but I think that the idea is to make uh, the most strict settings uh, preferable, but I, uh, I'm not sure they will ever be 
uh, enforced every time. I think that there will be switches for the deno itself uh, for uh, different types of, for example, to, to exclude uh, implicit any or things like that. Um, but currently, I don't think a lot of work has been done for it. Uh, right now, the main idea is to make it work. And uh, but it, this is a good question. I think that uh, I think that my idea is to uh, make it as strict as possible. But uh, I uh, unfortunately not everyone thinks like that, and uh, people would like to, uh, especially uh, Deno also uh, can run JavaScript, so uh, with no uh, types at all. So uh, if the extension is JS or if the MIME type is uh, Java, uh, you know application JavaScript or ECMAScript um, for the downloaded uh, content, uh, but. Uh, I would uh, assume that there will be some uh, configuration uh, files or f maybe currently uh, like there is no package JSON or anything like that, but uh, you can already, for example, uh, have some uh, common uh, TS file that imports uh, a number of uh, URLs and exports it as local, uh, you know, as local exports for other files to use. So you can even call it like package.ts or something. Uh, so. Uh, I would assume that either uh, there will be some command line switches for uh, for Deno or maybe some configuration files, but I know that there is uh, an opposition to put any configuration files because the idea is to uh, have it just work with the URLs uh, with no need for configuration like we have on the front end. So you just require, you have a script tag on the website and you don't care how, uh, what, uh, you know, what version of the language it uses as long as it is supported by, by the runtime. So it's not like newer than the browser supports it, but uh, but the idea is to uh, mimic uh, most closely uh, how the browser works. So uh, from things like requiring things that just work uh, to things that uh, like requiring uh, code from the internet and not worrying that it will uh, you know read your files on your computer. So like everyone who uh, uses a browser runs uh, all the time runs a random uh, code from the internet but we don't risk that uh, it will open my files on the file system. So, so here is uh, also the same idea. Here it can open files, but it cannot send it anywhere by default or edit it uh, because there is no right, um, uh, you know, right privilege for the file system. But this is, I think this is a very early stage and those things uh, you can even get involved. I would advise you to, to look at the issues. Maybe someone has already been discussing it. Maybe you would ha give some feedback for that. Uh, I've already been uh, active in uh, a lot of subjects in Deno, and I think this is a very good time to voice, you know, voice your opinion and uh, maybe uh, just uh, ask people about it, or maybe uh, see if there is already some discussion, or maybe even make a pull request to, uh, you know, to uh, to add some features. So, that's yeah, a very good sure. time. Thanks a lot. I thought I will have my chance for asking about Rust, but no, <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, uh, it actually blew my mind when I realized, I don't know if anyone else has noticed it, but if you reverse the syllables of node, you get Deno. Was it intentional or purely coincidental? Uh, yes, it, it was uh, it was intentional. So I, I'm glad that you noticed it and uh, that you are the only one who has noticed it. but. Uh, I should have maybe explained it before, but this is hard to spot. It's, it's good, uh, good eyes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafael. <laughs>